May I have your attention, please? <laughs> It's Marker's Monsters Halloween 2017. <laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome to Franken Friday, right here at Markers and Monsters. Drawloween is almost done, but you gotta get in some Frankenstein, and today I picked a good one for you. Yep, it's The Curse of Frankenstein, the 1957 Hammer Films production, kind of a remake of the uh, Universal Studios Frankenstein, but done by the legendary British Hammer Studios. Uh, this movie marks just so many uh, firsts and, and sets up so many great tropes in horror, but we'll get to that. I'd like to talk a little bit about the drawing first before we get into that. Uh, as you can see, today's episode is a little bit different. Now, you guys might not know this unless you've uh, met me at a convention and seen my portfolio or uh, you know looked on my website and stuff, but uh, in addition to the markers, uh, one of the things I love to do uh, is pencil drawings. Uh, I do a lot of pencil portraits of, of monsters and stuff like that, and occasionally some scenes and stuff like that. Uh, I thought, hey, you know, I've always wanted to talk about my uh, work with pencils and stuff like that. Uh, what a great opportunity to do this and uh, maybe make something that can be uh, sold as prints or something like that. Um, so anyway, that's that's what we're doing today. I have a uh, 11 by 14 piece of paper sized out to 8 by 10 here. Um, it's actually taped down to a an 11 by 14 piece of cardboard. This is actually the back of one of my uh, Bristol board packs. Uh, ripped it off when all the Bristol was gone. So those are good. So save those. There's a little tip for you guys because you need a very smooth surface to draw on and smooth with the uh, pencil lines. Uh, as you can see, I'm just kind of loosely drawing it in and then just adding in a little bit of tone and texture and rendering the little white things that you'll see up there in the uh, top right that I'm grabbing. Uh, those are called tortillions, torti tortillons. Uh, but anyway, they're blending stumps. They're little pieces of paper rolled super tight and you can blend and smooth around the uh, pencil with. Uh, to make different tones and shades of gray and, and stuff like that. So that's kind of where I'm at now. And this was a multi-day project. This thing took uh, quite some time, guys. Um, so if you see the camera change, I, I tried to minimize that. But if you see the camera, the lighting change and stuff like that, uh, just know that that's what's happening there and what's going on. As you can see, I got uh, Dr. Frankenstein put in here and he is working in his lab uh, with some spooky beakers and stuff like that down below and some piping. And behind him is the uh, Frankenstein's monster. It's uh, snapped loose, come to life, and he's coming for Dr. Frankenstein. Now, uh, as we get into this, I am not one of those guys that's a stickler for calling Frankenstein's monster the Frankenstein's monster. You can call it Frankenstein. It's totally cool. I'm, I'm okay with that. So when I say... Uh, Frankenstein here, I'm going to try to keep everything together, but just understand I may mean the monster. So use context clues and figure it out. <laughs> I, uh, I'm also using here, you might have seen me with a little thing that looks like clay. It's a little gray thing. Uh, that's a kneaded rubber eraser. You can kind of shape it how you want and pick out little fine details with the eraser. So that's what's going on with that too. All right. So let's talk about hammers. The Curse of Frankenstein. This is, as I said, a 1957 film that stars uh, Peter Cushing, the immortal Peter Cushing, the legendary actor, as uh, Dr. Frankenstein, and Christopher Lee as Frankenstein's monster there in the background. Another legendary actor, an amazing actor that's so synonymous with horror and, and, and stuff. It's just, it's incredible that these two guys were in the same movie. And not just this one, Tons of different movies. They were in lots and lots of different uh, Hammer flicks. But this one, as far as I'm aware, was the first of the uh, Hammer Horror in which they appeared together. Uh, Hammer Horror, Hammer was a uh, British studio, as I said before. Um, 
And they kind of wanted to do like, hey, let's cash in on this horror movie craze. Uh, the old Universal monsters are getting really big because of syndication on TV. Uh, let's make our own, you know, let's uh, let's remake the movie, do it a little bit differently, do it our way and get it out there. And boy, they did. And man, what a success it was. Um, followed up by many sequels. Uh, many different things came after this Dracula movies and stuff like that too, which also had Lee and Cushing in it. Uh, so kind of amazing, but this is the movie that really started that formula, which is a uh, lurid color. You got, uh, some gore as you could see down below, or you will see soon. I got some eyeballs in a jar there. So they had that in the movie, uh, eyeballs in a jar and like a heart in a jar and vibrant red blood and stuff like that. Just, uh, getting, getting butts in seats, kind of, uh, almost exploitative in the, in that you don't, you didn't see this kind of stuff, especially in 1957 when, uh, just a few few years earlier, movies like the creature from the black lagoon were coming out still from universal. And, you know, there's, they're basically, they're great flicks, but they're basically bloodless and stuff. And you also had the ladies were in a uh, more low cut, more scandalous dresses. Uh, that's a lot more prevalent in the, uh, Dracula flicks, of course, but in this movie, you got Hazel court who quite a, quite a beautiful lady. And, uh, you know, she's got some low cut dresses on stuff like that. Not nothing, Nothing that would be anything crazy by today's standards, but for the time, uh, you know, not something you saw every day, as it were. Um, so, yeah, these great flicks like that. But the thing about it is, uh, unlike a lot of other exploitation flicks, um, when these came out and, and you know, they exploited the gore and the, the sex appeal and stuff like that, they didn't lose the uh, good acting, uh, good stories and scripts, uh, great special effects for the time and stuff like that. So it's kind of a best of both world scenario where you have a little bit of everything. If you want to see a little blood, you got it. But you also have, a, a like I said, a really great story and great acting, great performances. So it's pretty cool like that. Now, of course, this movie, uh, The Curse of Frank Stein, was followed up by a whole bunch of sequels. Uh, you got next up, they did The Revenge of Frankenstein, the next year in 58, The Evil of Frankenstein, Frankenstein Created Woman, Frankenstein Must Be Destroyed, The Horror of Frankenstein, and finally, and I love this title, Frankenstein and the Monster from Hell. Super cool. Uh, all great flicks. I mean, some of them are better than others. I personally love Frankenstein created woman just because it's so weird with him, uh, trapping the soul of a poor murdered guy inside, uh, his, uh, love interests body. She committed suicide after he was executed for a crime he didn't commit. And, uh, so Frankenstein transfuses this dude's soul into her body. And so then she goes around and seduces the guys that, that set, you know, him up earlier and, and kills them. Uh, also the town and Frankenstein created women have a, instead of like a gallows on the outskirts of town, they have a flipping guillotine where they execute people. So it's wild. Uh, but all the movies kind of are. Frankenstein and the Monster from Hell uh, involves way later down the road. So an older Cushing who was in his 60s at the time, he's been in prison. But yep, you know what? He's still doing his experiments as the prison doctor on various prisoners and creates this massive like hulking behemoth thing. So it's pretty neat and pretty cool. Now, as you can see here, the makeup design for the Frankenstein's monster uh, in the background, probably by Christopher Lee, uh, way different than the uh, Boris Karloff Universal Frankenstein. He's a lot more grotesque. Uh, he's covered with scars and nasty skin, uh, stitches and all kind of stuff all over him. Uh, one of his eyeballs, and it's hard to see in my drawing here, but one of his eyeballs is kind of like faded away the pupil and is like wide and staring. So very cool. I love that kind of thing. And, uh, I definitely love how this, this, you know, changed the game. Um, I won't, I will say that the makeup design is not nearly as iconic as the Universal Studios design. Uh, however, what I like about the film series is that it doesn't follow the monster. Uh, each, each individual, uh, episode, it follows Dr. Frankenstein and he creates a different like beast every time. Like the aforementioned Frankenstein created women and Frankenstein, uh, and the monster from hell, you know? So it's pretty cool stuff and, uh, definitely worth seeking out, especially this first one. Great performances all around, especially by Peter Cushing, who was just an absolute jerk in this flick, but kind of love it just because. 
All right, let's take a look here at the scan. Uh, now, I'm not sure how well this scanned in. Uh, it's kind of hard to see with Lightworks, my video editor. So if it's a little grainy, pardon, pardon that. But let's see the details too here, just a pinch. Pretty cool. Uh, I dig it. I may do a little bit of extra work on Cushing's face coming up here uh, before I make prints of it. So if you see this in an altered format, well, that's what that's uh, all about. Um, but anyway, in the time I had to put out this episode, uh, I think it turned out really cool. Uh, again, love talking about the Hammer series. They are all pretty much amazing for different reasons. And I uh, hope uh, if you've never seen any Hammer horror, I hope you guys seek them out. Well, that's it for me. Like I said before, Drawloween is almost done, guys. We just got a weekend to go, and that's it. Pretty sad, but I've been having a ball, and I hope you guys have been enjoying watching them. Uh, so that's it for now. Until the next time, you know, keep the lights on in your lab, and beware of monsters rising from the slab. More than a hundred years ago, in a mountain village in Switzerland, lived a man whose strange experiments with the dead have since become a legend. A legend that is still told with horror the world over.